You've got a new snowboard, or maybe you have a new kid's snowboard that you need to make adjustments to. This is going to be a quick video on how to do that. I'm setting up a brand new Arbor Element snowboard here. I've got the Arbor Hemlock bindings. But what I'm going over here should transfer to most snowboards that have this style of insert. The inserts are just where the screws insert into the board to hold the binding down. You might see this style on snowboards where it's just a single track down the middle. But what we're covering will apply, the inserts are just these screws here as opposed to going into the board. First up, you need to decide if you're regular or goofy stance. Goofy would be with your right foot forward, regular would be with your left foot forward. There's a number of different ways to do this, but some indications are what is the first step you take going up a set of stairs? Is that with your right foot or your left foot? Also, when riding a bike, what foot do you keep forward? Is it your right foot or left foot? If it's your right foot, you're likely goofy. Or riding a skateboard or a scooter, what foot do you put in front? Another common test is standing still and having someone push you forward and seeing what foot you step forward with first. Most modern snowboard bindings are gonna have a base plate like this down in the bottom that just lifts up and gives you access to put the insert, which is where the screws fit into to attach the binding to the snowboard. Some of the older style bindings might not have this footbed here and it might just be attached directly to the board from the base of the binding. So because this binding is being attached by that two by two insert pattern, you're using these outside too, but it does have these inside that will be used to attach to the channel style inserts on a snowboard. There's also some little indicators here and that'll be used when I drop the puck into the base of the binding to set the angle. So I like to ride at about a 16 degree angle, so I've set that little indicator to match up on the binding, and most modern bindings will have this sort of system on them. You will likely have some of these washer type pieces as well that the screws go into. Now for right now, we're just putting those inserts into the base of the binding. Man, I love how these arbor boards look with that wood grain on them. So we've got those pucks put in with the screws in both of the bases of the bindings, but we need to figure out how wide do we set the bindings apart from each other, as well as how do you know what angle to put them at? One good way of doing that is just jumping off the bottom step onto the floor and seeing where your feet land. Do that a few times and then see what the angles are of your feet and then how far from the center of each foot to know how far or wide to put your bindings. So after I did that jump test, I found that my front foot is about 15, 16 degrees on the front, and I like my back foot open a little bit as well to about five degrees, so kind of a duck stance. And that's more of a free rider style stance as opposed to someone that might be carving around uh, all mountain, might like a, a zero degree on the back foot and an angle on the front foot. It's just something you're gonna have to play around with to see what feels most comfortable to you. Also on modern snowboards, you'll see some markings like this with these little lines on here. Those are reference marks on the snowboard to show you kind of the starting point of where you should start with the bindings. Typically those are going to be where you should start with when you're attaching the bindings and then moving them out or in depending on the riding style. If you're riding more powder or cruising high speeds, you might look for more stability and change those the stance around forward or back on the board just to give you more stability or maybe a little more float in the powder. So I'm just going to loosely set the bindings on at those reference points with the angles that I had. And then I'll check to see how far my distance is or how close I am to where I'd like to be. And that's right at 22, that's where I wanna be. So I'm gonna tighten this down. Every snowboard binding that I've ever used uses a number three bit. You can see this is a three compared to a two. And that'll really lock into those screws and make sure you don't strip them out when you're trying to install the binding. Now as you tighten these down, you don't wanna do them completely tight because there's likely going to need to be some adjustments made. So just get them attached to the board. I also wanted to point out that there are some slight adjustments you can make in the binding. So you can slide it back and forth depending on where that screw inserts in. So you can really fine tune that width 
of the board as you're sliding it back and forth, just those small increments. After you've got the bindings installed loosely, you're gonna to wanna to step into them now and just make sure that those angles and the distance between the bindings feels comfortable. After you've got everything feeling good, it's worth checking one more thing. Some bindings have adjustments from the front to the back just to make sure the boot is centered over the board. That adjustment can be in the heel cup of the binding here, or sometimes the, the toe of the binding. That'll just make sure your toes aren't hanging over too much or your heel over the back too much. You can now tighten the binding down completely to the board, and there are some additional adjustments on bindings that you're going to want to check. The first would be here on the toe, just making sure that the strap contacts the boot in about the center. There's usually going to be some si sort of adjustments down here, or on these bindings, the hemlocks, you've got an adjustment here. These are nice because they have a toolless adjustment. You can just pull that little tab out and screw it in. And then the ankle strap is going to be the same. It's kind of got an asymmetric pattern here, but you're going to want this uh, centered over the, and you're going to want to do that with the boot laced up tightly because it can adjust as you're riding and may be something that you need to adjust later while you're on the hill. That's why something like these hemlocks are nice with that tool-free adjustment. You can just pop those tabs out and tighten it or loosen it and adjust here on these different holes. Boot. These screws here are used to adjust the high back so that it's parallel with the board. As you can see here, because the binding is angled to the side, the high back doesn't run parallel with the edge of the board. So when you're leaning back, you're going to put a little uneven pressure. So to adjust the high back to be parallel with the board, we need to adjust those two screws. So on these Arbor Hemlock bindings, to make the heel cup adjustment, you just move this little screw either forward or backwards on either side. So here to make the high back parallel with the back of my board, I've moved this side backwards. And on the front side of the binding, I've moved it forward one notch. And now you can see with the binding angled at about 15 degrees, the high back runs parallel with the back of the board. Now this isn't something you have to do. And honestly, you may not even notice if you make this change, but it does give the board a little more of a consistent feel when on the heel edge because you're applying a consistent pressure along the entire high back instead of just in one point. On the back here, you've got a forward lean adjuster. And what that does is this solid piece here that's cut into the binding, that fits right against the heel cup. And so when you lean back on the board, that's what's going to initiate that heel side turn. If you want to lean forward slightly more and be able to get into that hillside turn easier. However, it does force you to ride in a little bit more of a bent stance, but you can adjust this forward lean adjuster down. And so it makes contact with the heel cup quicker. When you get a new snowboard and new bindings, or maybe you've bought a used pair or a hand-me-down and you just need to make adjustments to it, it's important to check all of those different adjustment points to make sure you have a comfortable ride. And then throughout the day, or the season as you need to make adjustments maybe as you're riding different types of snow you know how to make those adjustments now on the board with the bindings we'll be doing a review on this arbor element it's the rocker version so keep an eye out for that coming soon if you like videos on outdoor gear be sure to subscribe to the channel and if you found this helpful i'd appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up